Yeah, so I think we can, we'll, we'll go ahead and start, and that way we get three minutes extra, at, you know, at the end. How about that? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 30 Years of Mortal Kombat panel. My name is Bobby Blackwolf. I am pleasured and honored to be the moderator for this panel today. I am a 17-year video game podcaster out of the Atlanta area here, mm -hmm. uh, and I've also done work uh, recently with the Games Done Quick charity marathons. I'm one of the hosts, so if you ever hear somebody saying, you know, we have a do $25 donation from Anonymous that says, greetings from Germany, honk, orb, that's probably me, uh, or I'm one of the 20 people that do that. Uh, so that means I actually like reading about charities, and Dragon Con is an official charity. There's the crate over there. The charity this year is not a Mortal Kombat move, but it's called Open Hand. Uh, and it uh, serves the community by empowering people to live healthier, more productive lives. It, produce, it serves a diverse population of men, women, and children with unique nutrition needs. Uh, and uh, Dragon Con is matching dollar for dollar up to $100,000. So uh, there's a box there if you want to put something in there, and also in the Dragon Con app you can find a URL where you can donate online. But uh, enough about me, because you're not here to see me, you're here to watch this video and, and, and uh, meet with them So while they're throwing money in the box. Thank you so much for that. And so while they're doing that, uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves for those who don't know. Hello, beautiful people. Yes. Yes, I'm Carlos Piscina, uh, the original Raiden. Appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, let's see, I worked for NetherRealm Studios or Midway for the past 27 plus years. Just retired, so. Worked all the way up to MK11, uh, lead animator, principal animator, you name it, I've done it. Motion Capture Studio, all of that. Uh, stunt work, performer for mocap, all of that. Uh, first, I want to say God bless and uh, thank you very much. Anything I say up here is my own, my own opinion and not representative of WB or any corporation. So, I got to say that. Disclaimer. And uh, I am Martial Art Master Daniel Piscina, uh, original Johnny Cage, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Reptile, and Smoke. I don't, I don't play the game much, but I like to get beat up by people, so I do play the game sometimes. But it's really fun because usually, even though I'm losing, I'm winning because the majority of the time they pick my character. You know? So it's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, and... Uh, here we are. Yeah. Everybody enjoying Dragon Con? Yeah. yeah it's, our first, it's our first time here, and we didn't realize how huge it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know how uh, I think the first day we walked like for eight hours continuously because we, you know, you get stuck in a loop where you, you you're trying to find something and it's kind of you're going over there and then you get d distracted by something else and you go somewhere else and all of a sudden we're just wandering around. But it, it's been awesome. Thanks yeah. for having us. Thank you. Yeah, it's like the interaction, the cosplay costumes, you know, the merchandise mart, you know, just everything. Is there's just there's stuff to see everywhere. That's a. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody at Dragon Con for inviting us and having us here. Yeah, it's beautiful. The and and too, uh, the, cos the cosplay is going really awesome. You know, everybody who you know is doing taking the time to do cosplay. Thank you. It's really great to see not only Mortal Kombat stuff, but other other genres and just people uh, wanting to express themselves. You know, not only artistically, but you know, designing their own costumes or putting together their costumes. That stuff takes a, a lot of work. It's dedication. You know? Yeah. So thank you, and thanks, because I learned during COVID that podcasting is really, really difficult. <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, oh, I'm going to just do it. And then I spent about $4,000 trying to figure out what equipment to use and what I didn't use. And in the end, I was like, this is way too much work. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. So uh, the way we're going to be doing Q&A for this, uh, we don't have it up on the screen because there's an awesome movie and video just playing here. But we are using a, a website that you can access on your phone called pollev.com slash dcvg. So it's P-O-L-L-E-V 
facebook.com slash dcvg. You can put in your questions there and you can upvote questions that you want to see. And we, eventually we are gonna move the, the screen over to that so you can see what questions are in the queue. And I'm gonna be picking from those questions what I'm gonna be asking up here. Um, yes, I can, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna repeat it one more time for you. It is poll EV, so it's P-O-L-L, -L, like we're polling people, EV, dot com slash D C V G Dragon Con Video Gaming. And so you can put in your questions there uh, and I will be uh, we'll be switching the screen over and then I'll be asking questions from there. So what I want to ask uh, y'all first while we wait for some questions to come in um, is at what point during the initial design or development did you realize that Mortal Kombat might be uh, a big cultural thing, or did you not realize it until after it came out? But was, was there some point early on that you said, okay, we have something special now? Well, for myself, it wasn't until after. It was not, not released, but in kind of production. You know, they do a little uh, Q&A testing and a, a, a live video uh, gaming place. You know, back then, you know, they used to have pinball and stand-up video games. And we're talking, this is the old days, guys. I don't think there's anybody that's probably older than us. But at that point, uh, you know, just seeing the crowds gathered around, you know, trying to, you know, guys putting up quarters and gals, some gals, you know, and uh, just seeing the popularity of it. You know, it's just one of those things that y you want your... You're, you want your project to be successful or the project you're working on, but you can never tell because you have to let the culture and the people themselves decide, like, hey, this is what I want to latch on to. And sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you get that lightning in the bottle. So, Yeah, uh, originally we were only going to do 200 arcade cabinets. So I had uh, no idea that it would go so far. And uh, working on it, you know, uh, for me, uh, I just worked on it. You know, I was, you know, I'm a geek. I collect comic books. I, we learned uh, to collect comic books from our older brother, you know. And then Carlos and I, and most of the people you see uh, who at the, during the first uh, MK used to go to uh, anime uh, conventions together, or, or as I was telling them, we're Comic -Con. big Godzilla, Comic Con, yeah. big Godzilla fans. G Fest. Yeah. So, uh, I really like every put everything in the game that I was a fan of, or I just wanted to see in a video game. So I would, uh, uh, I wasn't, never. It was always successful because I was just doing that, and in, in my in my own mind, in my own heart. But yeah, yeah, we're just uh, you know we're normal everyday people who love you know just that whole subculture, you know back then going to wax tracks in Chicago. You know, just doing different things, collecting books, playing D and D, comic books, anything. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You name it. You know, just like everybody else in this room, we all latch onto something. We love something, and we love talking to other people or reaching out to friends and just kind of having that camaraderie or that uh, that closeness. You know, because we did everything from DJing. You know, uh, break, dancing. break dancing. You know, it's just doing martial arts together, it's its like everybody in this room can look at one another and say, hey, this is something I like, and somebody will say, yeah, I like this, and you know, it's it, even though we're all from different, um, different backgrounds, yeah, and we can all relate to a lot of things together. Tolkien, everything. You know, we used to read H.P. Lovecraft when I was 11. You know, I learned that from my brother. He's nine years older than me. All of his friends were reading that. You know, August Derelith, I hate name dropping, but you know what I mean? Just all that, you know, just all we had was at the time was we didn't have the internet and anything we had to look for, we would have to hunt months and months and months. Another thing, house music. We love house music. WBMX back in Chicago, you know, going to the warehouse, going everything. Just anything you could imagine. Medusas. Yeah, Medusas, <laughs> everything. We just, you know, just love hanging out doing the whole you know whether it was punk or you wanted to be a prep or you wanted to be all that category i know that's all different now but you know any category you can think of we loved it but we all loved each other you know we love being together and we love being just you know we i hate saying this because we're all the human race but different races 
all together. I mean, you could see us up there right now. We had, you know, you got some Hispanics, you got white people, you got Koreans, you got, you know, every culture there. So we just all embraced it and, you know, ran with it. Awesome. I do have some questions that are coming in. Uh, so I'm going to be reading some of these questions. I like this first one. This is going to be funny. Uh, did Mortal Kombat ever get you any chicks? No. Come on. <laughs> I, I actually signed a lot of boobs. <laughs> so does that count? You know, uh, it, it, it might count. But, you know, so that that's basically how far Mortal Kombat is. I think for me personally has gotten me. But, you know. Yeah, it's gotten, uh, yeah, I'm going to say yes. Yeah, because his wife won't bear it. His wife works for Warner Brothers and works on uh, on games too. So. Yeah, my, uh, Jennifer Hedrick works at uh, Nether Realm Studios as a character artist, and uh, you know she's been working there for a long time. So you know we had a, we have a relationship. So yeah. So yes, it has got victory. Chase, whoever that was. <laughs> so uh, we're watching a video here of the uh, the video animation that was done, uh, and you were talking a little bit about before we started, but what drove the decision to use video animation instead of pixel animation? Oh, excuse me, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we, uh, when John approached me to help him uh, develop the game, you know, we, we, we would hang out in arcades together, so we would, we would play Street Fighter, and he wanted to do a martial art game that a fighting game that had people who actually knew martial arts. I just came off of doing stunts for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and so he reached out to me. He's like, "Hey, can you, you know, you, your brother, and Rich Divisio, who's Kano, you know, help me create this game? We're going to pitch this game to a uh, to a uh, company I work for called Midway, that Valley's Midway. So, yep, well, yeah, is. he was just like, it would be cool, you know, if it was like, uh, you know, if it was real." You know, the, and there's a side story that's a little bit longer than that that takes back to when we were younger. You know, holy uh, shit! I'm just noticing. I forgot yeah. that we shot. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I forgot that we had shot with a cape, and then eventually we took that off. Yeah. So this is Carlos uh, creating the lightning uh, moves uh, yep. into it, collaborating with the, the lightning design. Yeah. So he's kind of think of things to do. He's pulling from like ancient history, usually into bow in front of uh, an emperor. You dust your off, yourself off because not even the dust is worthy to be on the floor in front of an emperor. So you can see where he's capturing different movements, taking different stuff that he wanted to put into the game. Once again, that's that's like you know that subculture back in the '70s and '80s was the the martial arts films and we used to go to the McVickers in downtown Chicago at you know three kung fu movies for a dollar you know and since we were practicing martial arts we love we love watching all that you know it's big trouble in little China you name it you guys already know all of it I'm not saying you you know everything I'm saying everybody can here can relate yeah to it. can relate to it so this is a question kind of a follow-up on that this is also something I wanted to touch on when I was thinking of like what I would ask uh, did the threat of government regulation affect the type of digitized capture you did before the ESRB was created? And one thing to know is that Mortal Kombat is one of the reasons we have the ESRB. Correct. Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Like, so I guess, I guess Night Trap was the mother and Mortal Kombat was the father. I don't know. But did you, did that, did any threat of that come uh, when you were de designing it? Did you expect to ever be in front of Congress or Mortal Kombat to be talked about in Congress? No, because we designed it for, uh, we, we were going to do 200 arcade cabinets for an arcade, and you do. In those days, you did not drop an eight-year-old at an arcade with a roll of quarters, because he he wouldn't have any quarters, uh, you know. So we designed it for young adults, you know, 12, 13, 40-year-old people, uh, you know, who would be at the arcade. So we never thought that it would go in front of anybody. Two, with the ratings, it's, it's kind of, you know, it is good that they have a ratings because people should know what they're getting into. It's plain, but I think, uh, you know, blaming the violence on ratings. You know, we're martial artists, we're brothers. We did Kung Fu all day long, and, and but we would never really physically uh, pick on each other or punch each other. 
kind of like this. We yeah, unless around. we were sparring, you know, but yeah. we never physically wanted to harm each other. Yeah. All of us. So, you know, our, yeah, our mother and father she, would she fucking <laughs> give us the chancla. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we, if we would pick on each other. So, and, and chancla you know, is like a slipper, you know, your mom would take it off and yeah. throw it in. You can have a cultural yeah. Mexican thing. So. Yeah. But I, I'll, I'll touch a little bit on this because I've done development for, for 30 years. Uh, so for the first game, we didn't expect. Once, once again, we were just drawing from that culture and subculture. You know, because you would see Indiana Jones, you know, uh, Kalima Shakta Bay when he's trying to, like, rip out the heart of that, you know, the one guy, the Indian guy. So we thought, oh, they can get away with it, and they're just, you know, got a PG-13 rating, you know. Um, not saying we were intentionally going to do that. But it's one of those things where you're like, well, if they do it, it seems like it's okay, and I'm not messed up, you know. But <laughs> you, you know, we're all different, so you know, people's sensitivities are different. But going through the actual process of, you know, all the way up to MK11, there is a, uh, you know, going up on the ESRB board and presenting your fatalities and everything. We, we know what the limits are to an extent, but obviously, if somebody's on the board and says, hey, go back and redo this. We obviously have to do that because, you know, that's the sensitivity of the board and, and everybody else. And we're not trying to, this is my own opinion, we're not trying to uh, have somebody initiate, you know, actual fatalities on each other, you know? That's, it's just a fantasy. So, you know, that's the way we looked at it. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, you read, you, and if you look at, like, just a ton of books you read a lot of stuff and you're like well they, they got away with some gruesome stuff and they're not being regulated but you know we all know it's fantasy and fiction so you know I, life seems to be a lot worse than, than, than fiction sometimes so here's another top rated comment once again we're using pollev.com slash dcvg how did you choose how to differentiate your movements as different characters hmm. So, uh, Tobias and I spent five or six 10 hour days recording every martial art move I can think of. And so, uh, doing the path of the game, the thing was to kind of create a, mo a movement and then do that a bunch of times and figure out, I would have to figure out a way how to do it you know, the possibility of doing it different ways. So it was like, okay, we're going to take the base, do that move a couple times, and then see how it, how it would look different ways, so that way when the next person came in, we would be, we could be like, you're gonna like, when Carlos went in, you can do your, your movement, but automatically we would, somebody else did the move that way. So then Carlos would be like, oh, okay, well then how about this? And okay, no, and then I would mentally, make a list of, okay, Kaos is going to do this technique this way, so when somebody else comes in, they're gonna, we're gonna have to figure out uh, a way to do the technique differently. And so, you know, that's the reason why uh, showing Hosung on a box, I was like, oh, we need the box, because otherwise, doing a, our, really all traditional martial arts are the same. You have to hold your fist in a certain way not to break your hand. So, you know, uh, this, it, it's only different when it goes to sport because then the rule changes the technique that you're supposed to use. So uh, saying that, like if I did a jump side kick, it would look similar to the way Carlos did a jump side kick or Sung did a jump side kick or, or Rich did a jump side kick. So I was like, if we put them on the box, we can make them look like they're floating as opposed to just putting them in a chair where it looks like you're sitting in a chair. You know, when you, that, that stiffness that you're sitting in a chair, you know, when you're trying to do stuff, the box, you can really balance your body and then try to change the technique while keeping the frames uh, very, very clean because we are using John Tobias's dad's high aid camera to film all this stuff. <laughs> so that's how primitive this stuff was. So that was the process. So right now, so you know, uh, that was 60 hours we recorded, we erased over to save tape money. So right now you're seeing seven hours of what I would really say, for me personally, I did like one six, tenth, one tenth. yeah, uh, uh, one tenth of what I did, and one tenth of what Carlos did. So when you guys are seeing this, 
it is not like the complete video. There's hundreds of hours lost, you know, because again, we didn't think it was going to be big. The only reason I have this is because John is like, hey, thanks for helping me create and choreograph this. You can use this for your reel. And I was like, oh, cool, cool. I can show that I, you know, help create something with it. So that's the only reason why people are seeing it right now or when they see stuff on, uh, on social media for, for number one is because I just happened to run across it and, you know, try to clean it up and download it different ways to see how different ways to present it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more difficult than people think. And to touch upon that, um, the other thing was my brother had mentioned what he had said, like, hey, uh, Ho Sung did the, uh, or, let's see, who came in before me, you did. I don't think Rich, Rich. was, was yeah. Rich yet. Yeah, it was. Uh, so we I, knew that we knew that um, the person who came before us, or my brother, hey, he throws a sidekick like this because we all worked out together. We we're eight hours a day up until we were about, you know, from. I would say I did it from eleven to twenty-four, eight hours a day. We would, you know, work out. So we knew each style of each person, but we would also study every style that you know we knew more or less Chinese style, traditional and contemporary. So if my brother said, hey, throw the kick like this, you know, we would do that more or less, like, hey, like this style or that style. Um, we would adapt to that. The other thing would be we would draw a lot from, you know, the movies that we watched. You know, what, whether it was like, you know, Seven Grandmasters or Master of the Flying Guillotine or anything. We saw Carter Wong throwing kicks, Jet Li, anybody. We would try to adapt and go, okay, we want to throw it like that, you know. You know, uh, Master Ri, the Taekwondo guy, you know. Yeah, Jun yeah. Jun Ri, yeah. yeah, all those guys. You know, Bruce Lee, everybody. We would draw from all of those diverse cultures and subcultures and try to, like, you know, feed it or funnel it into this so that way it would look different. You know, like my, uh, you know, Raiden's kind of like, you know, Cloud and, and Storm from Big Trouble in Little China a little bit. But then we would also draw from all of those kung fu movies we would watch. You know, and you know, Sonny Chiba, anything. You know, just it's it's you're like a sponge trying to absorb everything, and then you finally get the chance to be like, oh shit, I'm a martial artist. You know, I'm also an act. You know, kind of actor. I don't want to say I'm an actor, just a performer. You know, but trying to make something that you're like, oh, we're gonna make beautiful music together. And if it's successful, it is. If it's not, you know, it, it's because obviously we had the support like uh, of you guys. But we tried to do the best we could do, no matter what, and for everything, you know. And if it was successful, that's great, you know. That 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 uh, that helped us along the uh, along the uh, franchise. So, I just wanted to say, you know, I I, I uh, stopped this this video because it was so low budget. See, Scor the scorpion, uh, the Lin Kuei, See that dark bundle in the back. That's, that's a black t-shirt I had. Because what happened was when I was doing movement, we could see too much skin, and since there was no Photoshop, John would have to color that part, and he'd have to do it manually. And, and that would take like time to do that. So I was like, I took off of my black t-shirt, and I put it over that, and then I put the ninja cap on just to save time. You know, so it was just so low budget that we were just pulling ideas just right out of while we were videotaping because or we would see that, oh, it shows too much skin. That's going to take, you know, we only have eight months to do this video game. That's going to take too much time, man hours to do it. Because again, like I said, there was no motion capture and there was no Photoshop. So everything was done by hand. But uh, uh, I think, yeah, so. I, th I think they used uh, Deep Paint and Warren Targ. It was a proprietary uh, Warren Davis who, who made Qbert, uh, came up with a, a like a paint, Deep Paint style program, which is, you know, very primitive uh, uh, masking program, but you'd have to do it by hand, you know, clicking the arrows and then, you know, the enter key and, and try to strip all that out and then colorize everything. So. Just a, another piece of, of midway history that Warren Davis helped out on, you know, doing awesome that guy. stuff. Yeah, very, very talented individual. So uh, if you're on that Poll EV site, you can actually upvote questions, and that also influences what we've got. We've gotten a lot of great questions, so I need your help to vote for the ones you want me to ask next. So the next one I'm going to ask, whose idea 
was the Johnny Cage nut punch? And, and how many takes were needed to get it right? Was that Justin that asked this question right here? <laughs> Justin, our friend Justin usually always. Or right. Justin or Brian? So, I know that uh, the, the company always, and this is again my opinion and how I recall it, the company says that the, the character was based on Jean-Claude Van Damme, but some, they forgot to tell me that. <laughs> Not until the very end, John was like, hey, I want to make fun of Jean-Claude Van Damme. I will pay for a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie but I will not act like Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know, because I'm, I'm a martial artist and he's more of a, a dancer, uh, movie type of martial artist, not, you know, you know what I mean? I, I have my limits, they're not much, but I have some. So I, w I was like, no, I, he's like, let's do some moves and make fun of him. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. And he's like, come on. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. And then- Well, it's was, out of respect. It. Yeah, yeah, just kind of, no. And then John was like, looked at me, he's like, I'll buy you an extra large pizza tonight if you do the split. And then I was like, tonight? And then he's like, yes. <laughs> Little did I know that I would be doing the split 60 or 70 times different ways. And I couldn't use my hands because it would change the body shape. So when I'm doing the splits, I would just have to hold my hands like in position and go all the way to the drown and then throw a punch. I got so tired after about 20 or 30 that if you, there's some videos online where there's, they're spreading powder on the floor. That powder is what I use to uh, keep the rope from the rope dart, which later on I would give Scorpion, uh, keep it smooth so it wouldn't burn your hand because when metal is flying out of your uh, hand, attached to the rope really, really fast, it burns your skin. So we would rub baby powder on it, and I learned that when I went Tell, to, yeah, yeah, yeah talcum yep. on it to keep your skin from getting rope burns. So uh, in the end, I was like, we have to use that because I'm getting really, really tired. So we sprinkled that on the, the, ground, the ground to do another 30 or 40 splits different ways. So what you see is one time, but I did it 70 times, and I really regret doing that. <laughs> kind, of, kind of, but I did get a free pizza, and it's iconic. And how was the pizza? It's Chicago pizza. It does not suck. <laughs> I think it was church. Yeah, I know it does. Man. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> were there any characters that were cut from the final product that you wished were in the final game? In all of them, or just this, this one, one and two? All any of them. Oh, okay. I'll say any of them. That's an executive decision. All right, awesome, awesome. Uh, for my, for, for the entire franchise, yes, there was a couple that were cut, and I was, there's nothing you could do. Obviously, it's an executive decision, you know, and it's licensing. I was friggin' fucking pissed. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's got to happen, and I'm not going to name who it is. You guys will have to find out in, you know, 10 Justin. years. Yeah. Justin. It's fascinating. So, yeah, and so nope. or, originally that's why uh, there, the Lin Kuei turned into two Lin Kuei, and later on they changed the story to be one Lin Kuei and one uh, ninja from the Japanese clan. Uh, but originally there was only going to be one, and we wanted to shoot more characters, but we were running out of time, and that's where the idea of the pellet squad came up. And then uh, when John mentioned that we we're going to do that, I actually created... I think four, four different Lin Kuei. But that late, later on they turned into whatever they're tuned. But four different people like that are dressed like this. So we had enough movement to create at least four more characters. So I've got two questions here that are kind of similar. So I'm gonna kind of ask them both, but it's more about like the backstory and the lore. So there's, at what point did the backstory lore come in and how did it evolve over the life of the game? And how much of that lore and character backstory were you made aware of when you were portraying the characters? Well, I think for, for us, and you know that early on, John Tobias, you know, immediately had lore to it. You know, he knew, he had a, I want to say he wanted, he wanted, well, he had an outline more or less. You know, it wasn't fully flushed out because obviously we're, he was developing this game and at the same time going home and doing double duty. Uh, lore and I touched up on this with uh, with Brian out here and my brother and the Justin and a few people 
like when you're doing development, sometimes you're so passionate about something, you're 24-7, you're and this is very difficult, not difficult, I mean, everybody here knows this, but it's very difficult not to think about like, oh my God, I, you know, uh, I gotta think of, you know, how to write this story or how to do this character. So early on, John had, you know, an idea and, you know, would fill us in because we would go in and he's like, oh, I have this idea for this character, or, you know, or when he was doing the comic, he asked me to help him and Andrew Kadalka like, go in and color stuff. And by that time, I already seen the entire comic, you know, and as you're coloring it, you're like, hey, check these pages out, or this is what I have for this script, the bubbles are going here, and, and you know, putting together the comic. and. By that time, you see everything come to fruition, you know, for the lore. And uh, I, I think it was probably, you know, uh, I don't know, by, by six months, it was already fleshed out. And kind of this is the basic MK1 lore. And then for development, it, it happens pretty early on, you know, as we get to, you know, and I, I'm not divulging secrets. You have to, it's like a movie. You have to have your script first before you can actually actuate any of the, or execute any of the game design. You have to have that all up front. Obviously things and culture will change that as you're, you're developing and you have to adapt to that. But, you know, for MK1, it was, it was close to six months, you know, uh, probably development time. That's an estimate. I'm not, you know, that's something that you'll have to ask John Tobias about that in order to get that that microcosm of, of like, hey, at what point were you done with the story, you know? With him, it was probably not done until he had left, you know, midway, so. Yeah, and as far as me, the only part of the lore I got to do an input is when we were pitching the game to uh, Midway and Ed Boon, uh, John had Japanese ninjas, and me being a Chinese martial art guy, I told John, if he need, wants me to help him create this game, he was going to have to take the Japanese ninjas and turn them into the Lin Kuei. And then I explained to him what the Lin Kuei is, and there was a book that he had that he wanted to borrow, but then I teased him, I was like, I'm not gonna give you my book because of, you know, you'll dog ear it. You know, you never lend other guys your comics. And so I took him to, the, to a place where he can buy the books, but uh, basically the reshaping of what that it was was my insistence. So, you know, I introduced the Lin Kuei uh, Lord, Lord into MK. Yeah, that's one of those things where we, I want to, I want to yeah. add to what you just said. You know, we were Chinese martial artists. There's nothing wrong with the Japanese art, but you know, we already had Street Fighter, and that was total Japanese. You know, and not until Tekken did you get the Korean styles or, you know, Virtual Fighter to expand out like you know, Drunken and everything. But we were, you know, diehard Chinese martial arts guys. You know, and, and you get this back in the in the eighties. Now it's a little different, you know, after after the eighties, you know, into the nineties, you know, we opened up to everything. But it's one of those things where we're like, no, 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 we're gonna do it this way because, you know, this is how our man you know, back then in the in the eighties those 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 Chinese masters were very like stringent, like you do everything this way, you know. And it was kind of traditional. We were stuck with and not stuck with it, but that was ingrained in our head. Like oh we're not gonna you know we're not gonna veer off this path we have to go straight you know but obviously now it's, things are different and as you get older you change your mind about a lot of things you know right now we might be stubborn headed about something but in in a year in a month maybe in a minute somebody can come along and go hey what do you think about this and you're like you know what my friend likes that you know what I'm kind of yeah I changed my mind you know so it's it's a it's a journey yeah so you've hinted at the at this in this in your last answer, but somebody wanted to know what are your real life martial arts backgrounds? I, you yeah, I started actually. I started uh, martial arts and uh, it was like October nineteen sixty eight, mm -hmm. and it was uh, judo. Later on, I did a little Shotokan karate and a little uh, of uh, Shotokan jiu jitsu. Uh, then I went on to study Kung Fu and kind of fell in love with that and studied that for the, the rest of my life, including presently. And when he, just to explain, when he means Kung Fu, it's Wushu. So it's all the Chinese martial arts. You name any Chinese martial arts and my brother probably knows it. Yeah, so Kung Fu just means skill and time. So Wushu means martial art. Like if you do, you know, Tang Soo Do, you do Korean Wushu. That's just 
literally, I know everybody thinks that wushu is a certain style, but in the old language, it just means wu means war, shu means art or play, so it just means war art. And for myself, it's been all Chinese martial arts since my brother, you know, I didn't get into it until I was about 11. So it's one of those things where, you know, my brother's into it, I'm 11 years old, I'm going to start working out, and by that point he was in this Chinese martial arts, you know, journey. You know, at the, not at the beginning, but, you know, probably at the, you know, maybe 30% into it. So, you know, started training with him and then going to the schools that he would go to, you know, Praying Mantis, Bagua Zhang, Tai Chi, you name it, we'd probably do it all. So uh, once again, I am reading questions from the Poll EV site, so pollev.com slash DCVG, and you can vote and upvote the questions that you want to hear. Uh, so what, mo what move, mode, or feature do you wish made it into the original games that either didn't make it or you really wanted to see? I can't, I can't, I can't answer that one because they're all kind of in there for me. Yeah, it... it you know, the special moves, everything is, yeah. Yeah, especially during the first game, we had so much creative input into everything, like all the movements and how, what direction it was going to. It wasn't like there was anything that was really, we were, you know, I would say, I would really would have liked to have, we originally, during the first, you know, first few, yeah, first few months, we wanted to put three fatalities for each character so I really would say that that for me I wish they would have put that in earlier in the game to have three fatalities three different ways to to do it also we were doing power moves we were doing uh, for every every technique there would be different responses so right now when you watch it there's only three basic but really we had like eight or nine different ways to getting hit or and we had like four or five of different ways to fall you know so it was really more intricate than people knew, but because of technology, it just didn't happen that way. But I understand later on, they included a lot of stuff. Like, you know, in the yeah. first game we wanted x-rays, you know, we wanted uh, tag teams. Carlos and Rich wanted a tag team, but only they were the tag team. Yeah, the, only the, the Kano, Kano and Raiden. Raiden. So if Raiden was losing, you can call in Kano and win the game. And then <laughs> and then John John is like, no, we can't do that because it's about the quarters. That, the, that gameplay is gonna last forever. You know, and then only Raiden and Kano are going to be wanting to get played because they were the yeah, only ones with the, the, the tag team. There has to be a balance in the game. Yeah. So anyway, there were so many crazy ideas going out there. Yeah, and, and once again, every you know, if we could have more of everything, that would be great. But I think they, you know, the first game and the you know the tweaks of the second game, the balancing issues and stuff is is fantastic. You know, but you know, there, there's things we have. I'm sure there were ideas we could have you know, came up with, but it could never be done at that time, you know, it's just like, you know, once again, it's like Star Wars coming out and, you know, ILM fucking crunching just to get everything done because, you know, Lucas showed up and he funded them and they're like, oh shit, we're, we're building cameras right now and we should be, you know, halfway done, you know, so it's similar, you know, it's, we're, we're only as good as the technology that we have, you know, obviously and the ideas and everything else can be executed. How did you come up with the noise Raiden yells during his flying torpedo? <laughs> Is that a Justin question? Because <laughs> he asked me that yesterday when we were sitting down having dinner. I'm gonna tell that story. No, no. Well, let me, let me, let me. Yeah, tell the story, and then I'm gonna supplement with it. Go ahead. Okay. So originally, John is like, "Hey, I want Raiden to fly at you and to go like this." But the you know, Superman. Yeah, doing the Superman. And so he's like, "Let me get this really quick." But, you know, so he wanted Carlos to stand up and just extend his hands. But me being like the geeky nerd guy, I was like, you can't do that because people are going to see that his feet are, are, are not like Superman out. It's going to look like he's standing up and then you turn him sideways. So he's got, we got to take our time and pull out this, the, 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 the stairs and Carlos is going to lean on it and point his toes and arch his back a little bit. So that way he'll look like he's flying. And John's like, okay, okay, you got a good point. So while Carlos is getting situated on it, uh, on the staircase, you know, he's trying to get to the point where he could lift his legs. 
And so I remember him lifting his legs and the edge of his nuts, I mean, and his nuts landed on the edge of the stairs. And he went, oh, like that. Because when you lift your legs quick, all of a sudden it's all on your nuts. Oh. And then so we started just, yeah. we just started goofing around that, like that whole day going, oh, 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 like making fun of him and chanting like that. But I think that that, in my opinion, that sound, you know, because Ed was there and he was saying that like the whole time, he was like laughing and saying that, I think it made it into the game, in my opinion, it really did. So, yeah. It's one of those things like, and I'm gonna use this as an example, if everybody can see. So, you know, you're standing here like this and then these are the stairs and you guys are the camera. So it wasn't just me going like this and then, okay, quick, take the picture. At some point, it got to the point where it was, you're starting here and what I want you to do is go right onto the steps and then come back off. And that, that's, and this is, you know, once again, it's, you know, we shot all day, I can't remember. I have, we can't remember all everything we've shot, you know? We, we don't have like a video recorder memory. And plus I have, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trademark this. Um, I have Project Alzheimer's, because I've worked on so many Mortal Kombat's. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things where I remember doing this and, you know, being overzealous and getting on that step. And I think, you know, I might have hit it wrong. You know, while you're practicing, you're like, yeah, it's cool. I'm going to get this right. And then when you're, you're like, you know, and then, you know, working with the, you know, your friends all day. And everybody knows how this is when they're hanging out all day, even here at Dragon Con, you guys are back and forth going like, you know what I mean? Just understanding the. The, the more or less the, the synergy that everybody has and just the whole day that 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 was um, that was made fun of you know which is funny because you know we're yeah, and we you we got caged. yeah I got caged and uh, you know <laughs> you know and you, you have to you have to understand when some sometimes you make a mistake or you, you fall down and people laugh you get up and just you know you got to laugh at yourself you know you can't be too sensitive to things. Speaking of being sensitive, awesome. what was it like seeing a fatality done to your digital selves for the first time? Oh, brother, tell him about mom. Tell him, tell him that <laughs> oh story. Yeah, you gotta. Two things. When I first, when I first saw it, I was just in shock because there was a there was only the we didn't have names for the characters yet. I think Raiden and Kano only had names coming in because all the other characters didn't have any names uh, because they were gonna. You know, when we pitched the game, they said no, they're going to go do a different game, and then that didn't go through. And then we're they're going to come and make a come back and do the the uh, the fighting game, and then things were changing. But you know, at one point it was just me versus me, and John is like, "Oh, you got to come in, you got to come in, and check this out." So I come in, and he's like, "Watch this, boom, boom," and he knocks my head off, and I was just like in shock. I was like, oh, oh, "Because it, you know, it's." It's 19 like 91. I mean, uh, stuff like that is like, yeah, sure you've seen it in movies, but not in video. And I was just like really, really shocked. And so when the game was re finally released, Carlos and I took my mother. To yeah, I think see it was. A, I think it was testing. They were still testing the game, but you know they, they would tell us the location and we would bring our family. So my mom's watching the game and somebody performs a fatality and my mom whacks me across the head. <laughs> and she's like chasing Carla, goes to chase Carla and Carla's kind of moving away. You know, and she's like, why are you two guys doing this? Like, why are you guys being violent? <laughs> and like, just whack me across the head. And you're saying, don't be violent. And so anyway, so that was, that's back then. So that's what happened. So besides Goro, who was the most complex character to design and or come up with a backstory? Well, I'll say this in, in production, um, since I was you know either the principal or the lead in animation, anytime design would come to me with either a crazy idea or anything, I would say, yeah, give it to me, I'll execute it. Because it's pretty much I could I'm not being arrogant. I'm just confident that I could get it done. So, uh, you know, Goro in the 3D games presented a challenge to us a little bit, you know, and then uh, early on during Deadly Alliance through Armageddon, we wanted to do Mataro or, or Kintaro, the horse. 
But you know, at the time with time restrictions, sometimes you're like, oh my God, that's gonna take a month, you know, just to, to do the navigation. And uh, that would have been a challenge. But, uh, you know, obviously John, and, John Vogel and John Tobias, you know, I, I think John Vogel helped out a little bit. John might have, you know, done it all himself for, for Goro, you know, doing the, uh, doing that whole like armature uh, Ray Harryhausen stop motion animation. That's very difficult and time consuming and him doing all that just for MK is, you know, is a, he's a, he's a legend and two, he's very talented for doing that, you know, early on. So obviously big movies were doing that and this is just a, a video game that had, you know, maybe eight months to execute it and you have somebody doing, you know, this whole stop motion uh, character, you know, it's pretty impressive. So I like this question. I probably should have followed up the last question with this, with the story about the smack in the side of the head. Would you want to be an unlockable character as your current selves now in an upcoming Mortal Kombat game? <laughs> Well, well, since I'm mocap already in one of the games, I, yeah, I don't have to... But as you, like... Well, that was me. Okay. But, but, uh, in a current Mortal Kombat game, I kind of am already, you know what I mean? I'm not, yeah. I'm not actually a character, but I, you know, I did a lot of the, the performance, so... I don't think you guys need to see me. You, well, you guys want to see all the other characters, but, you know? But, too, every... Uh, people, people don't know, we didn't have a script. You know, when John put me in front of the camera, the first thing he said was, do something cool. <laughs> and, then, and then we spent the day, and the next day he showed up with a piece of paper that said high, medium, low. You know what I mean? So with the first day of filming, we didn't have any organization. And the second day of filming, the direction was, let's do a bunch of high, let's do a bunch of medium, and let's do a bunch of low. And then we just started categorizing, trying to come up with things. Two, it was a lot easier to act like yourself than it was to create like a character. So for me, Johnny Cage, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, those are parts of my personality because it's just easier to pull for. And as you can you know, tell from usually most of my comments, like being cocky is, is because it's part of my personality, you know, martial art wise. So it yeah, was, I think yeah. we we. So we, you already see us. Yeah. Right? You already see our personalities. Yeah. You know, in, in when you play the game, or you know, or uh, we inspired like the actors. You know, when they're doing, when they're contributing to it, uh, they're acting like us, and then they're adding stuff to it. So you know, as the base, what, what's so song? He's like, oh, we are the, uh, we're the root. He's like, we're the root. You get, you know, it changes up here. But it, down here, all the characters that, you know, which I'm jealous that Christopher Lambert asked, like, ex my, my brother. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we, act, we, we created the root. You know, we are the root characters, which is our own personalities. Yeah, I'm honored. Uh, you know, you got the Highlander playing you. Yeah. That's fucking cool. Yeah, that does you not know? suck. Yeah, and, and, and the touch to what my brother said, I know, you know, I'm going to keep it short because I like to friggin' babble. Uh, it, it, it's every... Every character, like Cage, Kano, and, you know, we all bring our personalities to it a little bit, you know. We had, uh, you know, if anybody knows Rich, how he is, he's kind of, that's, that's Kano himself, you know. He, he's just that guy, you know. And once again, my brother. Same with Ho Sung, you know, very talented guy and very confident. Not arrogant, but very humble, you know. Same with Liz and, you know, Parrish. Parrish is very, like, outgoing and... and, and you know, talks to everybody very, not boisterous in a bad way, but boisterous in like, you know, he's in the room, you know, hey, everybody, you know, he, he's got that aura and everything. So I think every one of us, you know, like my brother said, and like Hosung said, you know, uh, defined, we defined uh, a design and we executed a design, so. You know, you brought up Christopher Lambert for a second. I just wanted, I want to say, I just want to mention, I know I'm the moderator, but I have a, I have a head cannon. This is truth. Really? The original Mortal Kombat movie, in my head, and so it's right, is the true sequel to Highlander. 
Because think about it, Connor McCloud and the Clan McCloud, he's the last one. He, yep. he is the only one. Yeah. He becomes the god of lightning. He becomes Raiden. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and so the actual cool. I vote for that. The actual Highlander 2 is, is more common. That's awesome. We have a couple questions here that just want to know what your favorite, you pick your favorite. You, you, you know, you, we all love these questions, picking your favorite children. So if you had a favorite finishing move, what would it be? And what is your favorite character across the series? Okay, favorite finishing move. I think it's MK10, I did a fatality, meaning Raiden did. Why did I say I did? Well, two things, that, you know, just, ah, oh, jeez, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be humble, but you know, it's, you know, I did the motion capture for Raiden doing the move. Yeah, I, it's, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just like, I, I, I'm gonna say this, I'm just like you guys, I wanna be out there asking my brother questions. So, but, Long story short, there was a MK either, I think it's an MK10 move where Raiden does this staff stab fatality, you know, I thought it was pretty cool, you know, and I, uh, when we were in the motion capture studio, I don't know who designed it, but uh, very cool idea, you know, and then me trying to bring it to life, you know, I love doing martial arts, you know, I love arcing, doing this like whole wushu move where you got the staff and you're gonna slam it on the ground, you know, I got to use a springboard. Anytime we bring the springboard out, we were always goofing around, <laughs> jumping on it, you know? So uh, I would say Raiden, obviously, because I love Raiden, you know? There, there are a couple other ones that, you know, I, I, uh, characters I love playing. I, I always say this, I love playing all of them, you know? Because I was in development with MK doing all the motion capture, and you know, it's just, I'm passionate about that franchise. Yeah, for me, so John was like, hey, we got to think of a finishing move for Liz. We're shooting Sonya. And I was like, oh, we got to do the kiss of death. And then John is like, we can't, she cannot kiss anybody. Which later on in MK2, she could kiss somebody, if somebody could kiss somebody. But apparently in MK1, no, because it's sex. And I was like, looked at John, I was like, so we are ripping people's heads off. <laughs> ripping people's hearts off, electrocuting people, but we can't show a, somebody kissing somebody else. And he's like, correct. <laughs> and then I was like, well, what if we, and it's just out of the top of my head, I was like, what if she kisses her hand and blows it, and it's like a butterfly, it looks like a butterfly, and it hits the person and they blow up. And then John is like, we can do that. <laughs> and I was like, so I always thought it, so my favorite is Sonia's Kiss of Death, not only because I created it, cool. because of pretty the cool. conversation that happened during the creation of that. Like, Had a collaboration. Yeah, yeah, it was just like, oh, we can't do one, you know, we can't do sex, but we sure could do mutilation. <laughs> Is there a form or weapon you wish could have been included in the earlier games? And there's some examples here, Mantis, Dragon, Wandao. Yeah, so. those are actually all in the game. Uh, in the earlier games. In the earlier games. I would have loved to have done uh, my brother's two-handed sword. You know, we never got a chance to do that. Obviously, we had 60 styles, so, you know, I uh, designing those were, were you know, it was, it was a lot of work. Um, yeah, we at the first game we tried to make uh, the Kano's knives work. We shot yeah. a lot. We spent a, a whole day trying to shoot Kano fighting with his knives, but we just found it to him throwing the knife was not as violent as him using the knife to like. In the end, we were like, "Oh, we can't do this because it looks like murder." <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of weird perspective, but when you're actually doing it, you know, and not seeing like what the end product would be. We were like, yeah, we, but we did spend a whole day of Kano trying to use his knives in different ways, ways, and we thought that later on we would add weapons to the rest of the people, but that never happened in the first game. But yeah. So we've been watching this video of all this, and somebody wanted to know, what's the fate of these original mocap costumes? They threw them well, a lot of these are from home. Like the Johnny Cage stuff, was John was like, you got spandex, bring spandex. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then for the first time I was wearing spandex, he's like, it looked kind of boring, bring a sash, bring a bunch of different sashes. And later on we used those sashes for different things. Like we used a yellow sash mm -hmm. for for uh, Scorpion's mask. And it's not, a, it's not a mask, it's actually a sash. And I tied it behind my head and John wanted to cut it. 
and I was like, you're not cutting my sash. <laughs> so we draped the length of it down my legs. So that was part of that. So, yeah. you know, right now, uh, some museum has that. I, I gave it to some museum. And I have Johnny Cage's, well, it wasn't Johnny Cage, it was the shoes that, I had two pairs of shoes that I wore for the first day of shooting Mortal Kombat, and I still have those. And I also have Johnny Cage's sash, and I have the same sash we used for uh, Sonya and Raiden, because again, we were just kind of had those on hand. What happened to the Atomics? Didn't we, we use those for two, didn't we? Yeah. 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 So Are those yeah. still around or not? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find those. But Philip has his his costume. Liz has the original uh, Sonia costume, and she can actually fit into it. She's pretty badass. Um, <laughs> Osan still has those pants. Uh, Rich just gave the museum some of the pieces from Kano. You know, so basically, those you know, some of them are still out there. Some of the major ones that they purchased, they just threw them out during when they sold them to uh, Warner Brothers. Some of the well, main wanna, pieces they. I want to yeah. wait. Yeah, I want to. I'll follow up with that. Early on, before Warner Brothers bought us, we had a vault, an actual bank vault in the Midway Building, and all the stuff was in there. Not all of it, but I'll say a predominant amount. I, I managed to save the Quan Chi um, uh, headrest. You know, I saved the uh, the amulet and some other stuff. You know, the chair that Rich Tavizio sat in Quanchi for, for Sub-Zero Mythologies. I saved that, they were gonna throw it out. It was a remold of H.R. Giger's uh, chair that he had done. And uh, that's an interesting story. I have to, like, later on I'll, I'll talk about that. Not now, but in, in a podcast. That was pretty funny, picking that up. But uh, most of the costumes were, you know, were uh, taking up the vault space and they're like, hey, we're getting rid of some of this stuff. And, you know, me just, you're so close to the franchise, you're like, ah, I don't need that stuff. You know, I live that already, you know, and I live it every day. And some of the stuff got, ended up being thrown out. I think there's some pieces left still at NetherRealm Studios. And I think maybe John Vogel might have some of the, uh, the, Blue, not the red one, the blue Raiden costumes. You know, because I remember one year he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna put this all together and I'm gonna dress as Raiden." <laughs> you know, and, and you're like, "Oh my God, that's cool!" You know, John Volta wearing my costume. So, with the game being based in traditional martial arts moves and culture, what was the discussion like when adding things like magic and modern weapons, like the guns and the robotics and the military grade explosives? I wasn't around for that, uh, for the change of using guns in Mortal Kombat. I would not like that. Mm -hmm. Because that, for me, that's not like a, you know, if you're going to a tournament, these guys have big egos, they're not going to do the gun. They're going to, their egos are big enough to fight hand in hand more, you know, if you're really a martial artist, you would understand that. No, everybody's like, oh, you know, oh, if you, you know, uh, don't bring a, gun to a knife fight but you know that's funny but in the real martial art world you're proud and you you know it's all ego to fight somebody hand to hand and defeat them hand to hand because they're in, because it's more part of you as opposed to using a projectile so the whole of guns and explosives were, were not part of my uh help in, in the mortal Kombat franchise yeah i think that was more of a uh you know mk3 development cycle which i only helped out on not really like you know part of the team because i was working on other projects so that might have been like a, it's a john tobias ed boom question but you know I, I on the opposite end of the spectrum you know it's, i understand what my brother uh, you know says about the traditional fighting and and, and you know we had in my opinion, we had magic in there already, which obviously, yeah, it's kind of martial art, you know, the whole, the chi power and all that. But I, I kind of didn't mind it because it, to me, in a sense, it said, okay, if, uh, if let's say Luke Kang went up against Stryker, you know, Stryker's doing either his grenades or whatever, and Luke Kang's blocking it or able to evade it, then he's that much better of a martial artist, you know, because it puts, 
it puts it into perspective that somebody has to use a weapon against somebody who's very talented and obviously this is fantasy it's not real if this was if it happened for real it's, it's a different outcome but it's one of those things where you're like oh yeah you know there's still hope there you know what i mean when you're here you're like, fighting somebody with a gun or you know whatever or some type of you know super magic and you're like oh you know what that guy only has hand to hand and maybe a couple fireballs and stuff that's kind of neat but there's a balance to the game you know i kind of like uh ketchup and mustard you know cyrex and sector you know, it's kind of cool you know them disappearing through the floor and then you know just just in the development cycle it was great you know coming up with uh you know design we come up with ideas and we had to solve or execute you know like oh he comes through the floor and then what does he do he grabs the guy and turns him upside down you know it's just it's just a, a fun collaboration at that point that's good perspective i changed my answer no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no i know that don't yeah. have to but it's uh you know it's like yeah. uh so respecting you know, each other yeah, yeah yeah too you know when we were creating really quickly i know we're running out of time but you know uh, in, in the end, it, it was a big collaboration, and I, and uh, I and I would, you know, hearing all this stuff, uh, people should really kind of, you know, for me, this was John Tobias's baby. You know, he was the primary uh, creator of it, and we got to come uh, along for the ride of it. I know that uh, there's, uh, you know, and again, this is my opinion. There's co-creators, but really, there's only one creator for me. You know, coming in and working with him from before anybody set foot in the studio, you know, or when we were in the studio alone, it was only me and John, you know, there was nobody else. And so I always say that he is, you know, really try to reach out to him and personally and ask him questions, not through social media, because naturally, in my opinion, you can be getting somebody else on the end of a tweet, you know, because he's, you know, he hardly has any time. So, you know, if you get him on a panel, you know, shoot some questions at him. He, he was really, really creative and deserves more credit than he probably would ask himself to get. But, you know, I'll give, I'll give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah. And, and thanks for letting me collaborate on uh, on his baby. Yeah, and I want to thank, you know, I'm, I'm, I've i been on the production cycle. I want to thank everybody, you know, and, and personally, I want to thank everybody out here because without your support, seriously, and this is not if you guys didn't support us, we wouldn't be on number 11, you know? And if you guys didn't love and we didn't have the same passion and the passion that you guys have, you know, and, you know, and understanding and trying to tweak everything, you know, and, uh, you know, my brother and I wouldn't be out here talking with you guys, you know? And it's just, uh, it's, it's very touching. And I'm, I'm finally, after, you know, 30 years, able to do one of these and, and just discuss what I can and you know what's possible and, and just be able to thank everybody out here and I just you know I hear stories and I hear you know I, I meet everybody and it's just very touching to me you know and I just want to say thank you very much you know thank God thank the family and thank the friends out here you know we look at you as friends and not fans you're supporting us and we really appreciate that the most uploaded question that I held for the very end. Are you all coming back to Dragon Con 2023 with more of your cast friends from Mortal Kombat 1 and 2? If, and here's the pitch. If you, uh, everyone, please request from Dragon Con, leave a message <laughs> saying that you want it, and you know they can reach out to me, and I can bring back uh, some of my other friends. Here's how you do that. You take out your phone. If you liked this and you want to see this, take out your phone. Open up the Dragon Con app. Please. Find this app. Find this panel rated five stars. Say that you want to see more of this. If you did not like what you see here, take out your phone and open up any other app. <laughs> or see me in the alley. <laughs> or or you can come up here and say, hey, I didn't like this. Can you change this or that? No, I'll think about it. <laughs> no, because we do. We we also like taking criticism, you know, because we're we're human like everybody else. Everybody has. So we got to learn to adapt and grow and. All be good people. So love everybody out there. Thank you once again for your time. It is very valuable that you guys are here. You know? And it's, it's important to us. Thank you Appreciate so much. It. And your questions have been awesome. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I couldn't get some more of it. Have a great week. Give me my hand. Give me my hand. You've been great. Don't forget, you have a